This is the Copper Crab Podcast. I am Cheney Crab. I am Naveen Copperweiss. If you have any questions for the podcast, then make sure to either join our Discord, which you can find the link for in our description, or email us at coppercrabpodcast at gmail.com. If you would like to buy merch from our band, Entheos, like the shirt that Naveen has on right now, this beautiful drip tube that Harrison is going to switch to, then go to entheosstore.com, E-N-T-H-E-O-S-S-T-O-R-E, at, uh, dot com. If you missed <laughs> any of our tour announcements, then we are going on tour this summer with As I Lay Dying and Chelsea Grin, and that's a full U.S. tour. Go and check out the dates on our band page, and we are going to be announcing some uh off day headlining shows as well which i've talked about in podcasts before i think we're gonna announce those those this week so keep an eye out for those um is there anything else to say (coughs) oh if Uh, you if you aren't already tuning in (coughs) to our twitch then you're greatly missing out you're missing out on things like me being wine drunk doing covers of nymphetamine having a really good time (coughs) <coughs> having a really good time. Me having the hiccups for 30 minutes. Naveen having the hiccups. Uh, so on Thursdays at 7.30 Central Standard Time, we are doing this thing that we call Copper Crab Happy Hour. So we let everyone vote on a genre each Thursday, and the next Thursday we'll do nothing but play that genre for the entire episode and just watch it, watch it, talk about it, or listen and talk about the music. And Essentially, it's a podcast, but kind of even more... Uh, crazy. And me and Cheney <coughs> have adult beverages. We do have adult beverages, and last no one else does apparently. Yeah, I know. Because we're ju- like, well, out there is drinking. I'm like, okay, basically, it's me and Cheney getting drunk for everybody else's <laughs> enjoyment. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> this week we're doing um, MySpace Deathcore, which will involve a lot of bands that Naveen has played drums in. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. What's it feel like to be to <coughs> play? It feels good. That's pretty much bands, yeah. That's maybe. what I, my goal was actually. <laughs> from a young, <coughs> from a young lad, so yeah. his first words were "MySpace Deathcore." That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually didn't. Deathcore wasn't a thing when I started uh, playing Deathcore. Yeah, they didn't really call it that, did they? No. When did they? I would like to know the history of that. When <coughs> I what think it was Suicide Silence or or Job for a Cowboy. That was like. Who kind of started call? I don't know who actually called it that. Yeah. But I don't remember <coughs> when that came around. I, I, I was wondering if Animosity did make it up. I'm wondering if we did. Or Despised Icon. Like, but who yeah. had it on a shirt? And Because we may have had it on a shirt a long time ago. But Dude, we <coughs> need gold foil print shirts to wear on MySpace Death Court Night on mm. Thursday. That is a quintessential aspect of myspace deathcore that people may not know about if they weren't around for the heyday the gold foil (laughs) hoodie which animosity we definitely made that up definitely made it up we definitely made that up it's the it said well leo did the singer of animosity to be fair dude because here's another thing about animosity credit where credit's due i wouldn't be surprised if animosity is one of the reasons why bands have merch limits on tours now (coughs) yeah because animosity you would go to a show and you guys had so many goddamn shirts that it was like it was obscene it was obscene and you couldn't even tell that there were shirts that we would pull up with like 15 shirts i know and leo made this thing he took two pieces of heavy uh styrofoam Mm -hmm. like i guess what they would use for insulation some in some cases and he just completely plastered it with shirt designs and then would just fold it like a book and then that way he would use that instead of those like racks because it was so big and wide and it was just this obnoxious huge thing with tons of shirt designs and uh yeah, we had tons of merch. Yeah, you guys have. The guy a, was smart. Smart kid. Oh, my God. his The, smart kid. the merch was great. for anim- Like, Animosity's merch layout was goals. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a lot of different designs. There were colorful designs. There were ones that were more <laughs> typically, like, death metal. There, were, there was, like, that Cali Love one. You yeah, guys what? Yeah, and then a band does that. Is that Tsunami who did the Tsunami? Yeah, yeah. I think Tsunami. Tsunami has taken a few aspects from Animosity for sure. I like think songs? Yeah, they cover. What song do they cover? 
They cover fake blood. What's your favorite animosity song? Uh, I don't have one. I said last week on the podcast it was Tooth Grinder. Oh, yeah. That but I just made that up because that was the remember. only song that I could think of at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing MySpace Deathcore on Thursday, and that'll be a lot of fun. Here it is. I found it. Found the Tsunami shirt. Oh, the Tsunami one, not the... Show it to the <clears throat> show it to the people. So this is officially. This was on the back. So that's a tsunami <clears throat> shirt, but it was an animosity <clears throat> shirt. Yeah, and then here, and then this is the front. So it had. Oh, dude, that's the exact <clears throat> kind of like shirt. a tattoo design on the stomach. People would get those across their stomach. Mm -hmm. And then on the back, it's a West Coast hand W California love. That's what it says. There you go. So that's tsunamis. <clears throat> version and then uh paying homage to the greatest bay band to exist so you know they're they're giving it up there we go and then let's find the uh animosity one Gra animosity. greatest bay, ba bay band to exist shirt you guys were all from the bay right except for evan <coughs> uh yeah i mean we lived oh you know what's funny look at this if you wow okay if you punch in animosity shirt, their shirt comes up. Damn. Who freaked that? Someone put that in the code. Yeah. yeah. They got that written in the code. Uh, here we go. It's on Twitter. 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 It's on Twitter. Oh, no. Someone's looking for it. They want the original animosity. Damn. I wish we had. I oh, dude. <clears throat> well, anyway, it was. I can't find it, but it was exactly like that. Yeah, I remember that shirt for sure. And but then it says right here, our animosity RIP shirt. And that's then there's the, the legendary one. face ripper shirt that animosity had. I have that one. Wait, how, how is A lot of iconic shirts, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Paul, uh, what's his face? Paul Romano. Yeah, well, uh, a lot of the shirts that are iconic were done by a tattoo artist in San Francisco named Henry. Do you know his last name? No. And then he would just do the drawing mm -hmm. and Leo would actually color all the shirts. So all the oh, crazy wow. colors, it was like Leo did that in Photoshop. Except for the Paul Romano one. Yeah. That was not yeah. done by him. <clears throat> there were a couple that were done by Paul, but a lot of the iconic quote, quote unquote animosity shirts were done by this dude named Henry. Gotcha. Like the wizard shirt. Oh yeah. I remember that one. And, and that uh, one like was on a blue <laughs> tie dye, right? Yeah, it was like on a, no, that, there, there was like a black one with like stars like printed all over it, like little like glimmer, glimmering stars. It's right here, actually. Glimmering shimmer. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's actually, that's also on a blue tie-dye. Okay. So yeah, the guy would draw, I think Leo would come up with the, de the design and then the tattoo artist would draw it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And then just like give Leo the pencil drawing mm -hmm. and then he would like digitize it and do the coloring with Brewster. Oh, wow. Yeah. They would both do it. So. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, Yeah, I think there's still yeah. animosity merch around. So there is. I'm looking at it right now. It's on indie merch store. There you dot go. com. But if we were smart, we would reprint that California love one. Reclaim our throne. You guys. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, if you were smart, you would print, reprint the gold foil hoodie. I've been saying that for like seven years. Yeah. So someone should <coughs> take me up on that. Someone and just, just needs reprint to reprint the animosity gold foil hoodie, Leo. Well, someone <laughs> did do that on uh, Instagram. They had like an animosity shirt drop going on their oh, yeah. Instagram, I and I found I know, it. I know who that was. Yeah, and I found it, and I messaged the guy, and. Uh, I, don't, I, I wasn't even, like, threatening him or anything like that. I just said, like, hey, you should have asked us to do this. Mm -hmm. And then they, like, took the merch drop down. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they should have asked. They should have <coughs> given you guys money yeah, to Just say, hey, we want to do this. For sure. And I think Absolutely. Done a collaboration. We probably would have been fine with it. Yeah, I don't think it's... I mean, it's all up to different people. I don't think it's very cool, though, to steal bands' designs <coughs> and, like, yeah. print their shirts and make money off of it. But... I think because especially considering that's the only way that's one of the <laughs> few ways that bands make money. Yeah. So what if the band's broken up? Depends on the size of the band, man. A, a band like Animosity, it's like I could get a hold of you by reaching out to you on 
You can Instagram. literally easily just send me a DM. I mean, I could do about, yeah. I could text about two people and get your phone number. Yeah. You know, if I'm connected to music in any way, send you a DM. Yeah. So I've had the same phone number for 22 years. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> so. <laughs> so just call him the next call time. You people wanna, got my number. Call him the next time you want to collab. <laughs> <coughs> throw, throw some money in Naveen's yeah. way. So anyway, <laughs> we covered the animosity merch. Yeah, which portion. is really cool. So um, we did put out a new song last week. Yes, we did. An end to everything. And the I'm stoked on, it seems like people are feeling it. So I'm yeah. really stoked on that. It's a song that we're both really proud of. We worked very hard on it. And yeah, I think it's a good tune. So I'm glad. And it also debuted at number nine on uh, Liquid Metal last week. So awesome. So shout out to Jose Mangan for... Sh introducing so many people to our band. Yep. Um, it's been huge for it's us. It's been very it's been huge, huge for us. us. And like Jose is out here doing awesome things for the underground metal community. He's got, he's a dude who's got a big platform and he puts bands on that platform and he genuinely cares about metal. And he's one of the few people with that huge of a radio platform who, and just, that channel in general, <coughs> Liquid Metal, it's yeah. one of the few channels uh, with that big of a platform on Sirius that's putting all of these bands on air and introducing a ton of people to our band and several other metal bands. So shout out to those guys over there for really being so supportive and genuinely helping us a lot because last year we were on tour right after we put out I am the void and it was on Sirius X or it was on liquid metal. It was on the countdown and we would have people coming up to us every single night saying that they heard about us because of that. So it's, it's really, really insane. And seriously, they're over there doing, doing the Lord's work for metal. Yeah. And by that, I mean the dark Lord. Totally. Spreading the word. And playing good music too, man. Playing yeah, really playing good music. Playing a lot music. of sick bands on there. Dude, so. seriously. And a lot of bands that wouldn't other to otherwise get like yeah. radio play at all. Like, like us? Yeah, us. Yeah. So shout out to them. Um, but yeah, it's like we're excited to continue to share stuff off of the EP with you guys because I think that this is a lot of the strongest material that we've ever written. And it's just, you know, every time you write something, you're passionate about it. At that time, it's like we wrote Time Will Take Us All three years ago we moved on to the ep so we've been really stoked about the ep for the past year yeah and well we started it in the summer yeah it's almost a year yeah S so it's cool to be able to like start rolling that stuff out and sharing it with everyone else because it's such a hard <laughs> process to like hold music in after you've turned it into your label that's it's agonizing the time between having something done and being able to have people actually hear it. Yeah. So it's finally out in a couple of weeks. Uh, I think two or three weeks we're going up to Pennsylvania to shoot three more music videos. Yep. So we're excited. <coughs> you guys better get ready for more material. Yeah. It's a, it's we're a trying to keep it coming. Yeah. So we took a long time between uh, Dark Future and Time Will Take Us All. Mm -hmm. And we basically... N we're after we put out time will take us all we're like we're never gonna wait that long again to release music yeah so this came out this has been about a year almost to the day right cheney yes not to the day but to the month i think uh time will take us all came out in march yeah the al so the album came out in march yeah right right so that was like the last thing we put out mm -hmm. and then boom next march another single yep and we plan on doing it again <laughs> next year. So we're, keeping it we're going. already writing and we're already talking about studio time for this year. So and turn in dates and all of that stuff. So we're rolling stuff out, but there's also a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So we're excited. I feel yeah. like we're going to keep doing this for a really long time. So mm -hmm. uh, and we are going to Pennsylvania to work with my good eye. Yeah. With David Brodsky. Yeah. Uh, because we did, we didn't do, we didn't do the last video with them, but we did the videos from our last album with them, and we had planned to work with them again. So, yeah. which shout out to Malcolm Pugh who shot the yeah. video that we put out last week. Malcolm, 
I was in our band for a short period of time in at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. He did some of the s- he wrote some of the solos on the Infinite Nothing, and it's been so many years since we've worked with him, and we've wanted to like work with him in some way. So when it came to looking for someone to shoot the video for that, we were like, Malcolm Let's lives here. Yeah. Malcolm's shooting it. rad videos. Let's let's work with Malcolm. And it was really like a uh, uh, great experience. And he did such a fantastic job capturing the shots that we wanted and do uh, editing the video perfectly. And we couldn't have done it without him. So shout out to Malcolm. Um, yeah, super happy yeah. with how it came out. Yeah, we're happy with how it came out. And uh, yeah. So I think we should get into questions from this week. And yeah, that's that's <coughs> what's been going on with us. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch of questions about the new single. Uh, Morg Terror starts off with, uh, where did the lyrical concept of an into everything stem from? Was it a personal incident or moment or an event not related to your lives? Yeah, so... I'll, ha- I'll handle this one. Right <laughs> <there>. no. Naveen, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> <laughs> so lyrically, I'm sure I'm gonna going to continue to talk about this as the EP rolls out. The whole EP is connected. It's about something that happened in my life, actually something that I witnessed. Um, And it has a lot to do with addiction and the way that addiction can corrupt someone's life and corrupt the lives of people around them as well. So An End to Everything is about, um, in itself as a song, it's about kind of surrendering yourself to a sense of darkness and embracing that that is a part of you. And that's long story short, what I like people to do with my lyrical concepts and if they're into lyrics is read the lyrics and, you know, it may mean something different to you than it does to me. You may interpret it in a different way, but I wrote um, it about something that happened in my life and um i don't completely want to tell the entire story now but it's basically watching someone kind of you know give their life away to something that that they sh- that shouldn't have it, it that shouldn't have happened that way yeah so yeah that's what it's about so even as far as like losing your life yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yep yeah. Uh, the next couple are from Atrocious. Uh, first one is, on a past episode, I recall a discussion about a difference of opinion on the first single release for Time Will Take Us All. Uh, did you have something similar with this EP, or was there like a debate about which song mm. to come out with first? What was the debate about single release on the first? Oh, yeah, because I didn't want Absolute Zero to be the single, the first single. Yeah, what did we want? Or what were we thinking? I can't remember. We were We were not... You were very clear from the beginning. You were like, Absolute Zero is the first <laughs> yeah. single, 100%. I just thought it was kind of a higher energy song, mm-hmm. and it sort of has a taste of almost everything that happens on the album. So I thought it was like a good example of what you could expect for the rest of the album. And, and then that, to me, that was like, I think that song and I Am the Void are the only like full fledged songs. The rest of it's like this huge journey. So I always wanted that to be the first song. Yeah. Um, on this, on the EP. <laughs> it was cut and dry. It was cut and dry. We like that's the first song. Yeah, we knew that was going to be the first single basically <laughs> from the minute that we finished it. Yeah. Like even Mark, Mark was like, that's the first single yeah, right there. Yeah. That's a lead single. I think pretty much everyone. And then we sent agree. it. So we have, we have two managers. So we have um, kind of like a manager who oversees like the big picture. And then we've got a manager who's kind of our day-to-day manager and our day-to-day manager's name is Stephanie. And I sent her, we sent her the EP and she like sat down and listened to it and was in total agreement with everything that we said. So it's like, we were all just on the (laughs) same page as far as that went. With that being said, we have always known that every single song off of the EP was going to be a single. So it, it, because every single song off of the EP is going to have a music video accompanying it. So we knew that it was going to be that way. We just didn't know after 
an end to everything, what exact order we would put everything out in. So it wasn't a matter of choosing which song was the single. It was just a matter of choosing what order the singles would come out in. And actually, the singles are coming out in pretty similar order to what they are on the EP with, an e- with one exception. Yeah. So... <coughs> But yeah, it just made sense. I think that song kind of has the most of a well-written single sound to it. It's mm-hmm. like the most catchy song. So we were just thinking, we got to put this one out first. Yeah, it's definitely. The, it's, the, it's the slammer. Yeah, definitely. That's what it, it was called, the working title. It was, it was called Slammer. slammer. Yeah. So, and uh, I would say the next song we're putting out is a little more like old school Entheos style. Does that make sense? Do you agree with that, Naveen? Yeah, I think it's a little more along the lines of what you might expect from us. Yeah. But still more, um, like, packaged up yeah, in a so different it's way. More, yeah, a little more streamlined. So I think with this one, we were, on Time Will Take Us All, it was going to be a huge artistic journey. And on this one, we wanted each song to be its own song. Yeah. And right now we're kind of, you know, discussing what exactly we're going to do for the next EP. So yeah. we're just that kind <coughs> of band. At the what I, will, up, what I will tell you guys is there's not one song on the EP that sounds the same. Yeah. So you, you don't know, like, an end to everything isn't, like, exactly what you're going to get from every other song. Um, but all of them do kind of have a similar structure in a way. Like, they're, they're more structured than... The songs on our last album. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's kind of a little more... Uh, Which was a goal. Yeah, it was a goal. It was a goal to kind of make like a little bit more simple of a structure, but keep the Entheos sound. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I don't know, I love giving myself little parameters, I guess. And I always do that before I write a release. Like, what do I want this to sound like? And it's re- it's really vague, but there is usually some sort of parameter yeah right so with the ep we're like all right they're gonna be singles they're gonna be bangers they're gonna be a little more simple and then within that you can kind of go anywhere totally and then yeah and i think i knew i knew (laughs) what i wanted the lyrical concept to be for the ep like a year before we went into the studio just because it was something that had happened the actual event occurred Right after we moved to Nashville, so I well, it occurred over a period of four years, but it's like uh, the f- the finality of it occurred right after we moved to Nashville. So uh, twenty twenty two. What year did we move here? Twenty. So in twenty two, in twenty two, yeah. I knew exactly what I wanted the EP to to be about. And right now, I'm starting to uh, figure out lyrical concepts for the next thing that we're doing. So yeah, I'm starting to write stuff for it. Yep. We got a song forming, and over I think here. we're we're our uh, we were just talking about a new song last night, and I think that our writing style is evolving a little more even. Yeah, like we're going to, I think, probably collaborate even more on writing songs and like together. <coughs> that would be good. That doesn't mean that I'm writing the the riffs. What it means is that we're going to take like riffs of Naveen's and vocal parts and decide what like this belongs here we should do this here i have this vocal idea here yeah, so yeah. this that should lead into that so well i think now that you're doing more melodic vocal ideas it is going to change the writing a bit absolutely if i knew what you were doing a little earlier in the process mm-hmm. that could could kind of play off of each other there totally so yeah it's totally. fun i mean writing is, this so is fun. what i love doing it's my favorite part about the music it's the only part I like, actually. You don't like playing shows. I mean, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. But I could, like, if someone, if I had to choose, mm-hmm. you can write songs or play shows for the rest of your life. I'm going to pick writing songs. Yeah, I would pick writing songs as well yeah. for the rest and I know of my a lot, life. I know that's not for everybody, but that's definitely my, when I really feel the most alive. Well, but playing a show is super sick. Well, it's just, it's more... Uh, there's a lot of stress that comes with playing shows of course. that I don't feel when I'm just at home writing songs. Of like course. it's very relaxing. Yeah, and touring and playing shows for us is a product of the fact <coughs> that we like to play music and that we want to keep playing music. Yeah, of it's course. It's not the other way around. Like I don't 
I'm not like playing in cover bands on Broadway just because I want to play shows. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's like there's a um, a goal there. That's mm-hmm. why we go on tour. And playing shows and going on tour is kind of hard. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a um, it's a thing that you got to get used to. I mean, I, and I love doing it. I absolutely cherish all my time on tour, but it's it is hard. It's not I a mean, walk in the park. It's simultaneously like one of the coolest things you'll ever do with um, and the one of the most grueling things that you'll ever do. Yeah. Touring is very hard and it's hard no matter what kind of touring you're doing, no matter what kind of vehicle you're touring in. At the end of the day, you're still sleeping in a moving vehicle, a moving vehicle uh, at at, you know, your best hope is to be sleeping in an airplane, right? <laughs> it's like yeah, I guess. no matter what you're s- yeah, no matter at what level <coughs> you're yeah, still you're still sleeping in a moving yeah. thing. And you still kind of don't really have uh, like your day. You don't really get to spend your day exactly the way you'd like to. You're kind of like waiting around or. Yeah, yeah it's just it's the, your your personal comforts yeah. are not always directly uh, not, accessible yeah. to you. I'm not trying to complain. It's just it's it's not like being at home at all. Yeah, no, of course <laughs> not. And it's not for everyone. Like not yeah. everyone likes touring. That's not, That's why nobody does it. It's for very, very few people. Very few people can actually do a tour and want to do it again. Totally. But it is worth doing once, I think. If you have the if you have that bug mm-hmm. to tour, you should fi- find out if it's for you or not. I recommend it. A thousand Absolutely. percent. Coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah. Agree. Agree. All right. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh did you guys play any of the new songs live at the Lauren Shore Christmas show? And if so, how were they received? We sure did. A lot of blank stares. A lot <laughs> of, uh... No, we definitely, we played two new songs. Mm-hmm. Um, and Into Everything being one. And they went over great. I mean, it was there. I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to make some more kind of s- structured songs was to mix those in with our set and have songs that were a little more catered to playing live, honestly. Because when you write stuff in your bedroom, it's different from getting up on stage and playing it or playing it in different types of venues. Sometimes we play shows that are in bigger venues and there's more space in there. So playing a song that's really fast with like a million notes doesn't really come across as easy to understand yeah so we did want some songs to play in different venues and i think that into everything is a good is a good like in between absolutely yeah <clears throat> and the other one that we played i think, I think yeah i loved playing them i thought there was a great crowd reaction i mean we were ge- generally playing in front of a lot of people who didn't know who we are you know it's and that happens every yeah. tour you do that's not your own headlining tour you're playing in front of a lot of people that's yep great that's point. that's one of the reasons you want to go out on yeah. tours is because you're going to be exposed to a crowd who you who may not know about you yep so generally a lot of the people at those shows didn't know who we were anyway so they all the music was kind of received as that and i thought the crowds were awesome uh that is something to think about that I don't think a lot of people do think about. Yeah, yeah. I don't think a lot of people think about that either. Like, you're... This is their first time hearing your music. At, like, ever. Yeah. A huge part of playing live is winning people over. Like, I know that the internet is big and vast and all kinds of people can find out about bands there, but there, there are a ton of people who have only heard of one band and they haven't heard yep. of any of the bands on the package. And... You go out on a tour hoping to win over a lot of those bands' f- fans. And that's why I think it's actually important to go out as an opener, um, <coughs> especially playing first, man. That's a, it's a, sometimes can be a tricky situation to be in just because it makes you a better performer. Yep. Like putting music out online and playing live are two absolutely, totally different monsters. And the more that you can play in front of crowds who don't really know who you are and like learn to put on a show, the sicker you're going to be when you're a headlining band. Yep. Hone in those skills. Yeah. There are, there are a lot of things to hone in. You know, there are a lot of things that you don't think about when you're 
you know, playing like a bar and you don't have production. And but as your band grows and grows, you ha- you start to think about sound. You start mm-hmm. to think about yeah. lighting. You start to think about the production, uh, the instrumentation. You know, you're after a show, you're like listening to you're watching videos of your band playing to see if the mix was good that night. So yeah. you're always trying to hone those things in. Like I was talking to a friend. I won't say who it is, but he is in a band and they're more technical. And he was watching that Pantera reunion. And he said he was watching Lamb of God and it came here to Bridgetown, which is a hu- huge venue. And he was watching Lamb of God and he was like, man, if we played in here, our riffs would like, it would sound like shit. You wouldn't yeah. be able to hear us at all yeah. because it's so big. So you just have to think of those types of things that you really don't think of when you first start. Oh, absolutely. And each time you go on tour, you learn a little bit more and more. <laughs> absolutely. And you I think that's been great for me personally. Me too. I mean, you constantly are learning things <coughs> from bands. Every band that we go out on tour with, I I just love learning from them. That You know, a lot of bands have been doing it for a really long time and they've really honed in their thing and they know a lot of shit and that's why they're so sick. Yeah. Like, I love watching Whitechapel live. I think they're one of the most dialed in metal bands. Like watching Whitechapel live is absolutely destructive and they've just got it perfectly dialed in. Their sound guy, Brandon Cagle is one of the best in the business and their production is ripping. Their lights look amazing beyond them being amazing musicians, you know? Um, so just every single band that you go on tour with, they inspire you to, to get better. So mm-hmm. you're always learning. And it's important to keep an open open mind going out with bands. And even if you don't necessarily like the band's music, just go and, like, you should be watching their set. You should be uh, trying to observe, like, what's going on with them. What's good about this band? What yep. What can I do to kind of, like, what can I take from this to use in my own thing? Yep. I'm always learning. You always I'm learning you have from to every be. time I watch a movie or any band or any artist, I'm always paying attention. I'm like, okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get what they're doing. Mm-hmm. How can I utilize some of that? Absolutely. In my own thing. Absolutely. Because I think it's easy to just be like, oh, I don't know, whatever. Pop artist, cool. They're, I'm never going to have anything like that. But there might be something cool that they're doing on stage. Yeah. The cool light thing. Like, how can I do like a smaller version of that? Or like, you know, whatever it is. Or watch music videos. What's, (coughs) what can I do in a music video that's kind of like something that they did in theirs? Maybe it's a small scale version or maybe it's way different, but I get the idea from this music video. Like, it's one of the coolest parts of the world, I think, is to like observe what everyone's doing and seeing how you can bring those things into your life and use those creatively. Like that. On the new video that we did, Cheney's like on this big stand thing. Mm-hmm. And we got that idea from Marilyn Manson. And yeah, I could have been like, yeah, Marilyn Manson, he's, you know, rich. He can do whatever he wants. But I'm like, well, I could probably make some sort of version of that. Yeah. And that probably cost me like, I don't know, 20 bucks or something. Yeah. Yes. To buy wood and construct it in the backyard. Yep. So. All th- Using dude, also shit that we had. Imaginations and creativity, <laughs> uh, they're those are really, really good tools. And yeah. I just remember it reminds me kind of of like, you know, in kindergarten, we our teacher had this box of things. It would be like paper towel rolls and tape and construction paper. And you could like take it and build something out of it. And it's like all of this random stuff that people would have just thrown away. You can make something really cool out of it. So if you take that method into m- creating art, it's like I could I could honestly take a paper towel roll and build it into something really cool to use as a prop in a picture in a music video. So, you know what I mean? What it's like build? if you think of things, I mean, I can think of a bunch of shit that I would do right now like a uh, build something out of clay around it. Okay. All or, right. You know, make it into a prop, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, something. But you can you can really with the power of imagination, you yeah. can make a lot of something out of nothing i think that's why the latest video that we did turned out so cool was because Channy and i tried to think of as many cheap cool things that we could do like the stand 
like doing a little bonfire. We did that in our backyard. Yeah, the bonfire is in our bo- backyard. There's a the, big spot of grass missing from the, where the fire was. The <laughs> lake is down the street from us. It's just a spot that we... It's just a lake. We scoped it out yeah. and we just went and shot there. And we literally had this huge like smoke machine, fog machine thing. And I thought that we were going to get, we all thought we were going to get arrested. Yeah, we thought we were going to get Because we were out. blowing smoke through the park all like. And there was people there. It was kind of like making a scene. <laughs> yeah. But there was, all, there were other people there uh, who were shooting like a civil war movie. Yeah. So <laughs> it was, but you know, you have to be resourceful. Exactly. We just, we knew that, that park was, a, was yeah, down the street. Video. Yeah, it's not like we yeah. spent tons of money on it. Yeah. We knew that that spot was down the street and we're like, let's just go fucking bust it down there. We don't have to rent it out. It's free. It's another place to shoot. Yeah. So. Or like the candles in the like little church scene that we did. Those are just candles off of Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's like, you know. You can be, make be cheap and resourceful. Yeah. The the thing that stand that I made that was like scrap wood I had plus a couple two by fours and then a big piece of fabric that we used. I think it came with like a backdrop that we bought. Yeah, I think for, it's photography. for photography. Yeah. It's like some cheap fucking thing off Amazon. But anyway, what we're getting at is you, you know, gotta be scrappy out there, you gotta dude. Be scrappy. DIY till we die. Hell yeah. Uh, are there any more questions, Harrison? Yeah. Uh, Germs asks, when writing the music, do you start with a riff or with a drum beat or pattern and build from there? Uh, do you take the past parts you've written and rework them for a new song? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> so it's riffs first every time. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I just kind of think of some idea. Lately, I've been um, just kind of, I'll look for like a cool, weird scale. Or use a, an already established scale that just has like one note that's a little weird. That's kind of how I've been writing the newer songs. So it's a little more straightforward, but then it has like this one note you can kind of throw in there that makes things weird. And uh, I'll just sit there and write a bunch of parts and then start arranging them into a song and then fill in the gaps of what it needs. It usually kind of just writes itself after a while. It's kind of just, you got to get over that initial step of having a few good parts. And then um, reworking old riffs. I, I've done it, I've done it before in a couple parts, but n- mainly not. Mainly it's just like fresh ideas. And uh, yeah, then the drums are pretty much just, I just go by feel. I don't really think really hard on the drums. I just play the drums over the music. And then, yeah, Chaney writes the vocals. And that's it. That is pretty it. simple. Bada bing, bada boom. Pretty straightforward. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Not much to it. Uh, Mike or not S. Uh, Naveen, I know you tend to play and write guitar parts, but if there were some players you'd want to bring in, who would they be? Hmm. Uh, to play drums or guitar, or does it matter? Either one. Uh, let's think of that. Um, I mean, we've we've talked about getting like guest solos. I think that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> like a couple of my. Uh, musical idols. Be cool to get a solo from Jar Zombek. Yeah, Ron sure. Jar Zombek would, would be uh, interesting. Um, definitely, maybe Tosin would be really cool. Yeah, why? Well, I think it would be cool. That. Yeah, we I think should, it would be cool that. to kind of collaborate with someone and make a song. I think that would be really fun. I think that that would be for fun sure. too. Um, that actually brings us to another question. If you want to throw it in there, uh, Amber asks if you are ever going to get a guest vocalist on a track. You know, we talk about it all the time, and there are two vocalists who constantly come to mind. Um, it always just kind of comes down to when we're actually tracking the parts, I'm like, I want to do that part. Yeah, I know. It's like, what part are we going to give up? Yeah. Yeah. So it's more about that. Um, there are two vocalists who I know I want to be on something someday. Uh, actually, three. Who are they? There are three. Should I name them? Yeah. Why okay. Not? One is Johnny Davey. Uh, one is Mike Lassard, and the third is Andy from Rivers of Nile. Yeah, those are all people who I've talked about getting on a song, and who I would really love. Ollie from Arch Spire, we've talked yeah. about getting on a song. As we've well. talked about some non-metal vocalists too, which could be cool. Yeah, I think Marissa Nadler would be incredible to have on a song. Yeah, that'd um, be really cool. So yeah, we do talk about it. Like I said, it's just a matter of when it comes up, I'm like, I don't really want to give up this specific part. We were really close to getting Johnny on the EP, but we just, I 
didn't want to give happen. up the parts. That just didn't yeah. Happen. But you know, it's a <laughs> it's something that it is it exists, and yeah. maybe it'll happen one day, and maybe it won't. And yeah. uh, but it would be cool for sure. Uh, Chewie asks, "Will Evan play on the EP?" He already did. He already did. Yeah. Evan is on the entire EP. Yeah, he played on that latest song and uh, the other four songs. Yes. Yes. So yeah, the answer is yes. Evan is. He can't still get away from us. He can't get away from us. He <laughs> lives a mile away from us, so he's yeah. pretty much fucked. Uh, and then uh, sexy Dan asks, "Will y'all sell uh, sell any more painted drum heads on tour?" Oh my god, that's so funny because we have a friend who we call Hot Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um. Yeah. We'll yeah. Why we'll not? Sell, we'll sell drum heads for sure. Yeah, for cheesy. So. Like we will. We have some from the last tour that didn't sell. I just never put them out. Oh, really? Yep. Uh, Didn't put them out on the table. Okay, well. All right, next. Those will sell eventually. Yeah, well, they'll sell whenever we put them out on I the table. I could sell this Baphomet one. <laughs> Name your price. <laughs> <laughs> I'm auctioning it off right now. That is pretty cool, actually. It's a brand new head. You can get some good use out of that thing. That's true. Uh <coughs> And Towels asks, what do you think about investing in stage props like a fog machine for a smaller local band? <coughs> well, I'm five trillion percent a fan of good production. Mm. I which and that involves a fog machine, and I believe they're like a hundred bucks. So I would say for me, if I'm watching four local bands and one has a fog machine, it's kind of like unless the uh, unless there's another one that just like murders your band i'm picking the fog machine band you know what i mean it's like yeah. i appreciate i think a little goes a long way and there are a lot of touring bands who i think would benefit by you know upping the ante on their production a little bit i think for local bands keep it simple yeah because you don't want to go too yeah, far yeah because then you run the risk of being a pro cool yeah you do which is a, a term that i don't know who made it up but it's like when the local it's band is like too pro and they have like a bunch of gear and like road cases and stuff. They have like four axe effects. Yeah. They've got it. Every single one of them has an inky. And so a I think you don't want to be a pro cool. I think what you want to do is we've actually talked about this on tour. I think the most impressive thing uh, a local band can do is to be super pro with like a minimal amount of gear and be timely. You know who did that? Trash Panda. Yeah, Trash Panda did Trash it. Panda, man. They came through and they fucking blew our minds. And I, they had... Yeah. Their gear was like... Yeah. You don't... They like, were really like, simple. It was, like, it was like refreshing. We were like, sick. They have a half stack yeah. and a drum kit and they're sick. They yeah. get up there and play real sick and then they like got off real fast. Yeah. You know, that's... I think if you're just kind of more hustling, that's what people on the tour will take note of. Oh, They'll dude. be like, dude, these guys 100%. are like hustling. They're sick. You if know, you I rip like them. and you're hustling... And the, if you're a pro gear, don't feel bad because we are a propener. Yeah, we're a propener. <laughs> we're an overly professional <laughs> opening band. <laughs> Which also <laughs> exists. <Yeah. laughs> you know, the, the thing that we're really trying to get out here is that your professional gear doesn't make your band sick. It doesn't. And it doesn't. if your band isn't good, it actually makes your band a little worse. Yeah, it does. It does. It, does. it, op uh, it kind of, when you have too much pro gear, it's like, oh, why do they have all this? Yeah. You know? And I already feel that way about big bands. You know? Yeah. So, like, I think I think that's the best way to do it. So, I, I would say, yeah, a fog machine and maybe, like, a couple of lights on your cabs. Couple or like, lights. Like, Dude. I've seen very simple local setups where I'm like, that's really cool. Okay, you know? we saw a band, uh, like, two weeks ago. That band was not pro cool. Um, the band that had a couple of lights... They were yeah, on. They just had like a couple lights on their cabs. They were on, on tour cabs. with Reaping Asmodea. I f yeah. I'm so sorry that I can't remember that. Hold on, I'm gonna go look it up right now. Yeah, that's the way to go. Or like a a, a DIY kind of thing. I remember, I remember. I remember. Um, like if you can make something cool, like I've seen bands. I don't know if they do this so much anymore, but they used to. They'd have like these wood boxes, and then they would put like a fluorescent light in it, and then sort of. I don't know how they would control it, but. I think stuff like that is cool. And I think that could be uh, add to the show f for sure. But I'd say 
if it's going to be the thing where it's going to take you to longer to get it off stage and you're kind of like cutting into other bands time, that's then annoying. that's where you don't want to do it. And definitely do not go over <laughs> your set time and then take a, and then join your band at the front of the stage, take a bow don't and then a bow. furthermore sing happy birthday <laughs> yeah, to one of the members <laughs> while the, the actual opening band of the tour is trying to load onto stage because then everyone yeah. will hate you. The propener, was, the propener was ready to get up on there. That was us. Obsidian Mind. Shout out to Obsidian Mind. We saw them uh, a couple of weeks ago. They had the perfect amount of <laughs> production. Yeah. Like, they killed it. They had some lights. They had some fog. They upped the, they upped the ante. You definitely, know? definitely. They, they killed definitely. it. Because if you're playing a smaller venue, a little bit of stuff goes a long way. 100%. Like, just, I, I remember uh, there was, like, that small venue in Santa Cruz, the Catalyst Atrium. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw we saw a show there. I can't rem- remember who it was, but then not too long after that, Vale Maya played. And they just had, like, a few lights. And I, I remember you, uh, me and you just being like, dude, it's just so much sicker than the last show we came here. Yeah. And they have, like, a few lights. It looked fucking awesome in there. And it's not, it doesn't cost a lot of money. Just, you know. You can be crafty with it. I mean, dude, go and get, uh, what are those flashers that Sum- Sumac had with them? They had a very, very cheap set. Yeah, yeah. And the whole room was just red. And that was fucking sick. It looked sick. So, yeah, a little goes along. Maybe, maybe try to fasten it to your cab or something like that so you can just get it off real fast. Mm-hmm. And, and we do stuff like that. You know, we're trying to get our shit off really quick, too. Yeah. You know, like, because we're the propener. Yeah, so we're the propener, so it's like you're I'm trying not like to talking shit. This is like my, for my no, own. No, we're making fun of ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a pro cool <laughs> if we weren't on tour. Oh, me too, dude. I'd be yeah. there with in ears and a fucking yeah. wireless pack and a wireless mic. I was, I, d- I had a wireless microphone, and I was, I got made fun of so badly because I played a vets hall with a wireless <laughs> microphone. Yeah, and we were the metal band, and every other band, you know, I, it's my band from Citizen to Soldier. We were the like. Uh, MySpace deathcore band and everyone else was a hardcore <laughs> band and they were like of course the metal band came with a wireless microphone and then I sold my wireless microphone and now I wish I still had it because I fucking need one because yeah. I'm in a metal band Chaney <laughs> you were a procolist <laughs> I was a procolist <laughs> <laughs> yeah we weren't a, animosity was not a procol we were completely jank <laughs> <laughs> like we had the worst gear ever shot yeah, <laughs> like the band when I st- first started playing with them, they were like amazed because I had a cymbal bag, like I had a bag for <laughs> my cymbals, like dude, and it was like from the flea market. It like sucked. What kind of vehicle would a Procol come in to th- come to the show in? Procols? Yeah, they come in a van, a or tour a van with a trailer, a Sprinter, yeah. a really nice brand new Sprinter with yeah. bunks and a trailer. Yeah, don't have a trailer. Don't have a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> So animosity. Someone, played someone's hearing this and they they ha- are grabbing their baseball bat and they're just going out to their trailer and fucking. Like, oh, I, hate I knew I shouldn't have bought yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. If you show up with a trailer, no one's gonna judge you. Oh my god. Look, Bring Amber's saying they have a band with a, a tour bus. A Amber now, has told me level. about that before, and I went to her page and <laughs> I saw the flyer for the band, and I guessed which band it was based on like a little <laughs> Instagram <laughs> FBI. Work okay, if you're gonna go that far, that's fucking sick. At that point, have a full I know, stage then show. It, then it's turned around. Yeah, flip then it. it's turned around. Now you're the local with a tour fucking yeah, yeah. bus. Flip it on them. If dude. you are, if you are a local and you show up in a tour bus and you do not have have full stage production yeah fuck you <laughs> yeah, don't even try to be cool at that point go backstage and start eat, taking the band's rider dude oh my god yeah <laughs> just w- if you are a local band and you show up in a tour bus walk right into slipknot's dressing room and throw them out and start eating their potato yeah. chips actually this reminds me what show did we want to go to down there in atlanta or in chattanooga yeah wasn't uh, a Lizzie's show? show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. When is that? I don't... June. <laughs> it's not till June? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty sure we t- we ask it every episode. What day right. is that? Amber, throw it in the chat if you can, please. <laughs> June 15th. 
June 16th, June 15th, Chattanooga, and June 16th, Knoxville. Okay, that's my little brother and sister's birthday. Easy to remember. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions, Harrison? That's it for questions. All right, I have a question. And this is going to be the last for one. For me? This is going to be the last one for the night, and then we're going to wrap it up. It's actually for both of us, and I've been holding on to it for weeks because I think it's a really good question. Um, Just letting it brew. Connell Miller. Two-part question. Or is his name pronounced Conal? I don't know. Or is that the question? Conal. <coughs> or is it Conal? Yeah. <laughs> his name is two-part question. Part one, how do you pronounce my name? There we go. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We'll never know. Two-part question. What are some challenges and benefits of being in a relationship in a band together? And do you guys have any relationship advice when it comes to a creative partnership with a significant other? I would love to hear a dialogue. No challenges. It is the it is the greatest oh, thing it's ever. Just no challenges. It's just uh, whatsoever. It's butterflies and rainbows yep. being in a thousand mm-hmm. <laughs> percent. Yeah, love nothing it. bad ever happens. You never disagree on anything. Yeah. Naveen um, and I have never I disagreed. Think I think it's a huge... No one will get mad at the other person at Party City and go fucking walk around Party City for 45 minutes because the other person didn't want to put together a driving uh, calendar for the next tour. Wait, what does that have to do with Party City? You don't remember that? No. <laughs> Dude, Harrison remembers. That's why I looked right on him. You, were, We got... In a debate about whether or not we should write out <coughs> a schedule for people to drive okay, on the I, next I tour. I remember that. And the things you were saying pissed me off so badly that I fucking went oh, into okay. Party, s- party yeah, City yeah. and wouldn't respond to anyone's phone calls for 45 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I would say it's a massive, <laughs> massive benefit. Yeah. If, sure. if you guys work good together. If you don't work well together, then that's don't obviously going to be a, band a complete together. nightmare. If you do not work well together, and you will know this very early on, <coughs> if there are small things that you disagree on when you're starting out your um, creative business partnership, they will only become worse and worse and worse over time. Yeah. And I think also um, the, the, the two people have to be complementary to each other. Like if I really wanted to like be the star of the band, that would be problematic. Because you're obviously going to be more famous than me. You're a girl who does vocals and is really good. So that could be problematic if I was like wanting all the credit or whatever. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think you, you, if you guys are synced up on the right page, like for me, I like being more of the supporting role and making the music and playing the drums. And it's cool if people want to recognize me and it's cool if they don't. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm a vocalist. I'm not... You know, Naveen's not a vocalist and I'm not a drummer and a guitar player. Exactly. We're not doing the same. We do the opposite of uh, the roles in the band. Even even behind the scenes, I would say that my mind is more business. I am more. I mean, I'm not I don't want to say this like I'm all business because I'm totally not. I think the different shades of the business are also equally split. Yeah, there we go. Like I'm more of a technical guy and you're more like. Let's do this, go in this direction, that kind of a thing. Yeah. But we're, I mean, we're both technical and we, we just, we fill in each other's gaps. Absolutely. I think, in a good way. Yeah. So if, if there is something that I can't figure out or, um, you know, now I just know what things like I can kind of look at them head on and just be like, that's totally not my realm. Like if something has to do with more, um, let's say it's about engineering or tech shit. Uh, that's all Naveen. Naveen's going to be yeah. the one to figure that stuff out. But, but if it has to do with finding artists to do our merch designs and, yeah. y- you know, uh, pinpointing all of that stuff, then I'm going to be, be the one that's dealing with that. And I think we both l- are always looking out for, like, what the other person's not going to do, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, I know you're not going to go through the band's, like, finances. So I'm like, okay, I have to do that. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm l- way less likely to promote the band's merch store on Instagram. So you're going to do that, step up and do that job. Yeah, absolutely. So I think as long as you guys have complementary roles, it's a massive benefit. And then we haven't even talked about the fact that Chani and I have got to go on multiple trips to Europe together. Yeah, for like, free, for essentially on our business is yeah. done. So I don't have to text Chani while I'm in Europe or vice versa. Like, 
hey, this is, I'm at the Eiffel Tower. It's cool. I wish you were here. It's like we're, we actually get to be together. Yeah. So that is like freaking amazing, right? I mean, that's like a hack. And everybody Absolutely. on tour is like, you, you guys hacked it. That's so cool. So, and I think another thing is we work well together on tour. Like Chaney is not, she does her thing during the day and I do mine a, a lot of the time, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're not like super needy to each other yeah, that in is the so band and we're comfortable with uh, e each other how we are, right? Yeah. Or if I was like a jealous boyfriend, it'd be impossible. This would not, this would just not work. That would go, that would go <laughs> both ways. If either yeah. of us were jealous people, then it wouldn't work at all because there are <clears> things <throat> that, you know, might not upset either of us. Uh, but could upset other people in yeah. relationships with each other. Exactly. So, but there's also a part of it where a lot of stuff you have to learn to do over time. So when we started our band together, Naveen and I had been together for five years, and we met playing music. So yeah. we met, I met Naveen when he was full-time touring in, in Animals as Leaders. Naveen met me when I was playing in a band. So it's like we that's a part of each other that we just knew from the beginning. And the when we started a band together, it brought a, about a lot of um, things that we just had to learn to navigate. And it's still, you're always kind of navigating through this like business creative partnership yeah. that you have. And another aspect of that is that because we are the couple in the band from the beginning, and this is not, anything against anyone else who's been in a band with us but from the beginning um it became i, I would say it, within the first like year of the band it became clear that because naveen and i were together all the time and were and the way that naveen writes and the way that we work on stuff and we're together working on stuff constantly whereas all the time. Other, yeah. other members of the band they go home they have <coughs> wives they're doing other things with their lives naveen and i that's our life at home. So from the beginning of the band, it became very apparent that our right, we're kind of like, this is kind of like our thing. Yeah. And, and just, just because of the physical setup of the band, it's like t if two members of the band are literally always together, they're going to have a different relationship with the band than the member who checks in every once in a while. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's okay. You know, just accept what it is. Totally. But I, I do think that for us at the beginning, that was also something that we had to navigate with band members. And um, not that it was a horrible thing, but it's just a bunch of stuff that you don't really anticipate when you're starting a band with your buds and you're like, let's write a demo together. This is yeah, great. Yeah. When the band starts getting signed and getting advances and having to think of your artistic direction. It's like Naveen and I are talking about this stuff constantly and we're like, I think the band should go in this <laughs> way, uh, way artistically. And then by the time you talk to the other people in the band, it might be four days later and you might have a million ideas right, that, you've already hashed out. that you've already hashed out that other people might not have had yeah. a say in. And, you know, that can... That's just all stuff that you have to navigate. So I think it's been, it's, I think there are points when Entheos would have stopped being a band if we were not a couple. Yeah. I know that for sure. There Definitely. were some rocky moments in our world, like, especially around the time when, like, you know, Evan had quit, Travis was moving to intervals we were like, what in the fuck are we going to do? It, 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 that was like a a time when we really had to figure shift, out where... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a huge sh shift in the band, and we could have quit easily, but we had to figure out what we were going to do. So any business is going to have that kind of stuff, and when you're if you're with a partner who you feel completely supported by, then you guys are going to figure it out together. But starting a, a band or a business together can also expose every single crack in your relationship. Well, it will. It will. It will. <clears throat> and I, I think the downsides we're not really talking about, and that is, one, there's not a stable person in the relationship who just, like, has a job and is down to, like, hold down the house while the other one's on tour. Yeah. It's like we have to find someone to watch our cats and, like, take care of the house and whatever, water the plants or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
that's definitely a challenge. And I think most people, if they're in a, like a long-term relationship, they have someone who's just like holding it down and it's a little bit easier for the other person to come and go. So that's a challenge. And then like, you know, we're in our thirties, you know, so there will be a time where we're like hitting our late thirties and we're going to be like, do we want to have a family? Do we want to keep going with the band? Like we're, you know, that's something that we're going to have to figure out. Yeah, totally. So it's all just, um, yeah, it's all just stuff you have to figure out and being in a, a relationship. I think it, it honestly is a benefit in a lot of ways, huge but it's because of how we work together. And I think that if you can find a creative partnership like that with someone who you aren't in a relationship with, then it can be just as amazing, you know, but also there are aspects of just working and touring together that have made our actual relationship stronger. So it's like you learn I don't think that most people who are in relationships are going to go to work with the person they're in a relationship with and like see, oh, this is how this person operates when they're at work. Yeah. yeah. But we know how each other operate at work, it's you true. know, so we know uh, you can carry aspects of that into your actual relationship. With all of this stuff being said, there's also you have to figure out when are we turning this off? When does the band stop in our relationship? starts you know that's, and been, it's that's like, been a problem yeah, for us in the past that's a thing that Naveen and I had to figure out because I think well, I'm I like a work we, I don't know if we figured it out yeah it's like <laughs> we, we work on the band all the time you know I'm a workaholic <laughs> Naveen's kind of a workaholic as well in his own way yeah <laughs> I'm down to like <laughs> shut it off at a certain point but yeah. Chaney is I don't really extremely sh- driven, I driven. I don't really shut it off so yeah. like, you know yeah it's just shit that you have to figure out and work through. And I think it can <coughs> test the strength of your relationship and it can really, really strengthen it. And I like, we're in a really good place with our band. Yeah. You know, we've kind of navigated, we've been a band for 10 years. So we, well, nine years, 10 years next year, but we've been through a bunch of shit. Naveen and I have hired people. We've had to fire people. We've had to, We've yeah. cried together. We've laughed we've together. We've laughed. We've, we've cried. And blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's do great. We, do we have any relationship advice? I don't want to offer advice to other people's relationships. Oh, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give them some advice. <laughs> What's your advice? Honesty. Number one. Boom. That's true. That's it. That's true. If you're honest all the time, you're good. That is true. A thousand percent. And just feeling, thousand you know, percent. finding someone who you feel like you can uh, talk to. Yeah. Just be, uh, if important. you're always honest... You're either gonna be really close and together, or you're gonna straight up break up because it's you're not gonna be compatible. Yeah, one hundred percent. So if you're honest, that's my that's one of my values is honesty with mm-hmm. myself and with everybody else. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. Honesty. <laughs> Other than that, it's what like, else is there? It's hard to find a person in this world who you feel perfectly compliments you. So yeah. I mean. Uh, it's it's hard to offer advice you know if there if there's a a part of your heart that feels like you're not with the right person then you probably aren't well that's not being honest with yourself yeah there there we go there we go it's all about honesty that's what i'm saying dude i've thought a lot about this there we go so yeah uh (laughs) that's uh, i hope that answers that but um yeah i overall wouldn't change anything i think that it's made our band much I would change stronger. a couple things. I would say like a hundred thousand dollar guarantee. I'd yeah. change that. Yeah, I would change that. <laughs> I would, if if I could change anything, then we're getting a hundred thousand dollar guarantee. Yeah. But I'd say yeah. But so yeah, amongst other things. <laughs> but I think the way that Chaney and I have handled things, no, I would not change anything. There we go. Wouldn't change a damn. Thing. Obviously, we have more insight than we did when we first started. But of course, yeah. it's all, dude. Life's a dance. You learn as you go. Sometimes you lead, sometimes you follow. <laughs> don't worry about which you don't know. Life's a dance, you learn as you go. Well, Janie, did you write that poem? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did write that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's it for the podcast this week. Thank you guys, everyone, for hanging out. Uh, we love you guys, and we hope you have a good week. And we'll see you next week. Hell yeah, everybody have a great week. We will see you on Thursday. But first, like and subscribe to our channel. Yes, do that. On YouTube or wherever you are. And we'll see you over at Twitch. Much love.